And good morning, everybody. This is Grant from State of the Spark, and it is a lovely, lovely day. I'm super excited for today's show. We've got a lot of fun stuff to talk about today. I'm super pumped. Uh, so before we get into the four major takeaways I've got right now from Atomic Habits that I'm applying to my life, I really want to share these with you. Um, before we get into that, we've got other news. Yes, we're going to be talking about dino butts. Yes, we're going to be talking about why thieves cannot stop stealing this one stinking painting. And then an early stage investment I was able to do, a small early stage investment yesterday. That was super fun. And, and uh, there's not a lot of deep experience there yet, um, but there is some learnings from that. But before anything, you know what we're going to do. We're going to talk other news. We're going to talk about other news uh, or cup of gratitude. I just sang to you other news. <laughs> I meant to sing cup of gratitude. <laughs> My bad. Uh, so starting out with cup of gratitude, what are you grateful for this morning? You got to start off on the right foot. Where's your gratitude at, man? Of all the experiments me and Marissa have done, of all the external and internal experiments with living a healthy life, living a happy life, living a positive outlook, and just engaging with the world in a more positive way, nothing, 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 nothing has worked as much as gratitude. Fitness and health, big one. Good relationships, absolutely. But nothing nearly as important as starting a day with gratitude. It, it, it dominoes into so much else. So what I am grateful for this morning is exercise. Man, I got up this morning. This is the second time this week I've done my run, and it's been a while since I've done running, probably since the holidays. So I got out and did some run, and I am just so grateful that I can go out, walk out my front door, and run. And you can do this. You don't need a gym membership. You just need a pair of sneakers. <clears throat> I'm also grateful for all the great authors out there and all the great creators out there who I view as mentors or contemporaries or compatriots that I'm trying to keep up with. So I am supremely grateful for the creatives out there doing their gift. And I include in this watching Marissa yesterday, my lovely bride, who's doing her own life of experimentation. For those who don't know, me and Marissa's entire life, for those who are like, I don't really get what these guys, oh, my hair is a mess. I don't really get what these guys are all about. Like they've got these businesses, but they do these adventures. They got these books. The thing that ties all of it together is me and Marissa live a life of experimentation for you. We live a life that you can learn from our experiments. Some of the bigger experiments have been committing to not having kids. Some of the other experiments have been being on the missionary field. We put ourselves in the missionary field funded for an entire year. Um, and we had some learnings from that. Um, go back to read some of our books. And I'm also working on a, a new manuscript. And it, there's going to be a long story arc here. It's going to be a while called The Mission. And it's what we've learned about life's mission from transitioning into a life of missions and transitioning out of a life of missions. So that's something that I'm starting to outline. Um, but it's all experimentation. Watching the lovely Marissa yesterday clean her tent, prep for these overnight, taking a group of girls on an overnight trip, this uh, week, and then ultimately to Arizona, watching her do that, watching creatives. I put that in the creative category. Watching people push the limits of meaning and purpose in life. I'm grateful for you this morning. Jessica Ojeda checks in with the show quite often. Watching her experiment with homesteading and the emotion code, part of the reason I love small business and being involved in business as a consultant and as a coach, why I love that so much is because I get to touch people's dreams in a tangible way and watch them also experiment with a higher way of living. The same when we consult nonprofits. So I love, 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 and am grateful for all those lovely people out there who I consider great creators who are bleeding on the page and inspiring me. And it leads me, my learnings from them lead me into good pastures. So that is what I am grateful for today. What are you grateful for? Tell me in the comments, you crazy kids. Here we go. Other news. Dino butts. <laughs> it might be a little early for the phrase dino butts for some of you lovely people. But yes, it came into my science news feed. So we're not just having uh, teenage butt humor. <laughs> but yes, dino butts is in the news. Uh, I've got a link for you from Live Science. 
Long story short, we have discovered our paleontologists have come across the first well-preserved dino, but who's telling me happy inauguration day? Someone is pinging me on this. I don't know which group you're posting on, so I don't see your name. Who are you, dino butts? <clears throat> happy inauguration day. Drop your name in the comments because I don't see your name in my particular feed where you're watching from. So I'd love to call call you out. So yes, happy inauguration day to you, Facebook user. <laughs> uh, new creation. What does new creation mean? I'd love to know what that's all about. New creatives possibly. But dino butts, yes. So when it comes to uh, actually having a well-preserved fanny, and for those in England, I also know what you mean by that. Um, but for having a well-preserved but it's it hasn't provided much insight into dinosaur users over the last uh, or dinosaur researchers, and now we have a well-preserved dinosaur. But yes, it's known as a, oh Sheila, where are you piping in from? Sheila, I hope you're doing fantastic this morning. I I, I have some of my uh, Facebook pages open, and I didn't see you there, but I've got my my streaming service, and it doesn't always show me if it's in a private group. So happy inauguration to you today, Sheila. And I think I definitely know what you mean. When you talk about a new creation, maybe we'll get a new uh, <clears throat> a new uh, world today. So we'll see. Happy inauguration to you. I'm also excited. And I think we're all like, yay, let's get through this day as a sane person. Yay. So, <laughs> so I'm feeling you this morning, sister. Um, so this dinosaur butt was, was cleanly preserved. It was uh, the, it, They discovered it has what's known as a cloacal, I hope I'm saying that right, cloacal vent. And this is where this region of the dinosaur is used for everything from excrement um, to also breeding and laying of eggs. It is from a, I'm going to butcher this name, uh, Cetacosaurus. That's P-S-I-T-T-A-C-O-S-A-U-R-S. -T -T -A -A and it is a distant cousin of the Triceratops. That's right there. Boom. And... They're learning a lot about how dinosaurs, at least the, the ones as old as this, were actually breeding and laying eggs. And there's a lot of interesting information there. And just as a, a science, just from a science perspective, I nerded out quite a bit on the phrase dinosaur butts, and I wanted to use it in today's show, but also that we're learning a lot about how dinosaurs made him. This isn't alternate facts. We actually had dinosaurs. How far back, we don't know, or what we call dinosaurs. Um, but learning how they breed, learning how they lay eggs. There's even some ideas of how scent was managed by dinosaurs. This particular animal was about the size, they, they believe, about the size of a laboratory retriever that had a horned face and a bristly tail. So a little fun fact today, that yes, dinosaurs were real because we have their butts. <laughs> I hope you find that as entertaining as I do. That's other news number one. In other news, number two, why on earth do pranksters keep stealing this crazy Dutch painting? Let's look at it. Mm, 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 mm. Yes, thieves cannot stop stealing this ridiculous painting. It's not that ridiculous. It's actually a Dutch painting. It is known as two laughing boys with a mug of beer. Now, in some ways, you think, well, in Dutch society at the period of the painting itself, maybe it wasn't so different for two boys to be drinking beer. But some people think that it shows the lightheartedness of two prankster boys in the painting stealing mugs of beer and having too good of time as youngsters who might not be of age. Well, that's probably also good for the spirit of the painting because two mischievous boys did also steal this Dutch painting known as Two Laughing Boys with a Beer Mug. It has been stolen three times since 1988. The most recent of late has been stolen from a Dutch town of Leerdam. And a, a lot of researchers or security specialists believe at this point, the painting, which is only worth a meager $17 million, both of the last two times it was stolen, it just found its way back to the... Uh, museum where it was stolen from, they believe that it's currently being stolen because of its reputation for being stolen. And so now they believe it's more of the spirit of pranksters to come in, steal a painting, and then find a way to return the painting without getting caught. And they believe that the subject matter of the painting itself, two 
boy, two laughing boys with a beer mug themselves is partly in the vein and spirit of the painting. So if you're curious at all, curious at all about why this painting keeps getting stolen, there you go. Boom. You've got it in the feed. You've got the comments. And there's, no, you don't have a thumbnail of the painting there. You might recognize it if you're if you have any interest in art at all whatsoever. And last piece of other news. This is actually AI news. I finally was able to invest in a company yesterday <clears throat> uh, called Hello Woofy. Yes, I am an investor. Yes, I do think you should own the company because I'm excited about it, but I'm also excited about my investment unabashedly. But it's an AI company. So I want I know I've been wanting to invest in and support AI companies, and I will continue to do so. I also know that in investing, you should only invest in things you truly understand. And I generally have a company, well, I definitely have a company with websites and website design. So I try to stay up on what's going on with website design. But I also am familiar with web or internet marketing efforts and content creation. <laughs> so Hello Woofy is a tool that we actually have used, continue to use. It's got a decent scheduler. It's got a decent campaign creator. It also helps you use AI in the following ways. It helps you curate content in your account. It helps you actually auto-complete full sentences and sometimes full paragraphs of your uh, article that you're typing out with AI, and that's improving all the time in terms of finishing your thought, finishing your sentence, hitting the tab button, like you start to write a thought, and if the auto-complete starts to show the direction you were going, you just hit tab, and it speeds up the process of content creation. I've experimented with writing full paragraphs with that. It also uses AI to pre-populate emojis and hashtags when the hashtags that you're using in your content, it starts to suggest hashtags that you should use based on what's also trending. <clears throat> so the AI potential is huge. The brand is fun, and it's HelloWoofy.com. I do recommend you check it out. Uh, I've got a link here, and it's just the normal link. There's not an affiliate link or anything crazy like that. But just for dis uh, disclosure, I am an investor in the company, and I'm super pumped about it. So it's early stage. I do believe, obviously, I would have wouldn't have invested if I didn't believe this. I do believe that Hello Woofy will seek an exit at either with it has a strategic partnership with Hootsuite, I believe. It's seeking an exit with them or to IPO. And so there you have it. Um, hello, Woofy. But again, for getting any of the investment yourself, I do recommend you check out social media management powered by AI. And right now, it's way more affordable than Hootsuite, than Buffer app, and some of the other tools we've used. Check it out. I love it. It's super interesting. That, my friends, is other news. Dino butts. Why a painting keeps getting stolen by pranksters and... Investing in HelloWoofy.com. All right, my super friends. I am running. Jeez. And when I'm running, I'm listening currently to Atomic Habits by James Clear. I believe I finished this book in the past, but I just needed something to listen to. So I didn't realize it, but I was using one of James Clear's suggested tips when I was telling myself, listen, I got to go for a run and... I also need to find time to study. And in the morning, if I just wake up and start working, typically I'll wake up, shower, my, my non-optimized mornings. I'll wake up, I'll shower, I'll sit right here, and I'll just read and, and read articles. But I won't do deep study. I won't ponder the material. And I didn't get my work at it. Maybe I would have meditated. But it's a less than optimal morning. This morning, well, this week, I realized, I, listen, I got to get my exercise in. I got to get my deep study in, which is kind of more meta, more high level studying. I'm getting all that in. And then what I find is the rest of the dominoes um, fall together. Well, in listening to James Clear's book, he actually suggested that he actually suggested that you do this thing called stacking, where you kind of do two for ones. And I do this other thing where I put my shoe, I get dressed in my gym clothes and put my shoes next to my bed. I've been doing this for years. So, um, um, so I was listening to his book and realizing I was doing this. So here are the four quick, quick takeaways that I have from the James Clear's book, Atomic Habits. And I think he gets to atomic because he's trying to get to the smallest possible element you need to do to switch out your habits. He doesn't talk about necessarily destroying bad habits. He does talk about adding good habits, but he talks about making it so simple that it's in its smallest possible moment. And if you remember from my interview with the Olympian Ausstis uh, Helmstadter, who is the um, 
Icelandic javelin champion, she often talked about making the smallest possible increments. So I'm going to cover these four quick, quick ways um, to add habits to your life that I'm pulling away from the book Atomic Habits. And let me say this, please go buy this book if you want to change some habit lifestyle stuff. It's got great stories, of course, but it really does have applicable, workable tips. So go get the book Atomic Habits, but real quick, here are my four. Number one, find a linchpin habit. Here we go. What I have found, if I do not get up, put on my shoes, and run, if I do not do that, and running only takes me about 25 minutes, I think of it as 20 minutes. Normally, it actually takes me 25 to 28 minutes, sometimes 30, but I, I psych myself up by saying it's going to take me 20 minutes. <clears throat> when I compare that to the gym, if I put out my outfit and actually lift weights and go to the gym and all this stuff, I spend my money on the gym. I have mental resistance because I got to get in the car. I've got to drive. I got to put stuff in the locker. I got to shower because of the time it's already consumed. I have to shower there. So my investment at the gym is easily an hour and a half. So I haven't been going to the gym. So I'm going to cancel, literally cancel my gym uh, uh, membership and just focus on the running. Finding uh, my number one tip from Atomic Habits is finding a linchpin action. And that linchpin action is running. Seriously, when I go for a run, even if it's a crappy run, I get my exercise in. I listen to my audio book and I listen to it on chipmunk speed. So I'm actually blazing through. I'm getting probably 30 to 50 minutes of listening in in a 20 minute run. That's kind of leverage. So I'm already getting a two for one, 20 minutes of benefit actually doubles to 40 minutes of benefit, but because I'm listening at chipmunk speed, I've now got roughly an hour's worth of benefit within a single 20 minute period. I get my, my water in, I drink a full 32 ounces before I even uh, finish that 20 minute run. I actually then have this extra energy, this extra clarity and this extra time because I didn't go to the gym and I'm more awake than I would have been. So this morning I even wrote another 500 to a thousand words, maybe 750 words on my next manuscript called the mission. And this is the mission you're on, the mission we're on, the mission we thought we were on and missions in general and some of my experiences and learnings from that, but really how I encourage people to adopt a mission mindset. But I was able to write that in about 20 minutes of time. So all before I showered, I had run. I had listened to a book and got about 30 to 50 minutes worth of listening time, drank 32 uh, ounces of water, wrote 500 words in my book, and was show in the shower by 4.50. Now, that's pretty efficient, all because of the linchpin action going out for the run. So I do encourage you, you need to simplify, simplify, simplify. Just getting to the gym and doing the rigmarole for the gym was just far too complex. Yes, it makes for good social media photos to show photos of me well lit in the gym. Can't take social media photos in a darkly lit lake that I'm running around. But still, find a linchpin action. I highly, highly recommend that. Number two, instead of adding hard things like the complexities of, I'm going to start going to the gym. Find the path of least resistance. We need to leverage our laziness, my friends. <coughs> I sincerely believe we need to leverage our laziness. We need to make sure we need to quit fighting upstream to add new things. So an example of this is if you find that you linger too long in the bathroom on your cell phone at home, make the habit of setting your cell phone down on the desk or the credenza. When was the last time you heard that term or a side table on your way to the bathroom, use the restroom as you should, and come out in a normal time and then pick up your phone again. So a lot of times people probably spend, I think it's three times longer in the bathroom if they bring the cell phone with them into the bathroom. Another example is, is getting to, just like my example this morning, is getting to the gym itself really difficult because it's just out of the way. Maybe you have a commute to work. Well, your gym that you prefer that all your people go to, it's way out of the way. So you end up just not going at all but you have this splinter in your brain that I go to this gym. Well, if you just switch gyms to a gym that's on the way to work, or if you run at the run in the morning, like I am, uh, I gave the example this morning. If you make that shift, you'll actually probably get your exercise in. So I'm just going to close. I'm going to burn a bridge. I'm going to get rid of my membership at that gym to focus that if I'm going to work out, I got to run and do, do some workouts here. I'll probably buy a kettlebell or two, two weighted kettlebells here at the house and use those. Uh, myself right here 
It'll build up my back, build up some strength, do some muscle conditioning, uh, and get my exercise in all here at the house. We've already got jump ropes. We've already got like a yoga room. So I'm just going to make that happen here. So again, instead of adding hard things, I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to join CrossFit. I'm going to add all this equipment. Find the path of least resistance. Too long in the bathroom? Instead of trying to psych yourself into, I'm going to go and be disciplined, just leave the phone in the, in the kitchen or leave the phone on a side table. <clears throat> That leads us to another one, the path of least resistance. The third one, if the second is path of least resistance, the third one is reset the room. Now, this was an interesting concept, and I do this a little bit, but he was quoting a guy who actually resets the room. So if he watches TV and got done with a, uh, watching Netflix and he just he sat during Netflix but felt lazy doing it, he'll reset the room. He'll get up. He'll put the remote control next to the TV. Now, in this one guy's case, he wanted to cut the habit of watching too much TV. So what he did was when he resets his, his living room, he puts the controller next to the TV and then actually unplugs the TV. And when you unplug the TV, you just add an extra 30 seconds to 60 seconds of frustration. Sometimes that's all you need to create enough resistance. So he resets the room. Uh, another example that they gave is while the shower is warming up, wipe down the kitchen, uh, the, uh, the bathroom sink or even the bathroom toilet. There's not a better time to wipe down a toilet than when you're about to get in the shower and shower off. And this way, this person said, I'm not productive. I'm actually quite lazy. I don't want to spend Saturday cleaning the bathroom. I don't want to spend my Saturdays doing all these chores or my evenings doing these chores. So if every time I'm about to leave a room, or transition out of a space, even my car. When they get out of the car, another thing he does is clean all the garbage. Every single time he gets out of the car, he straightens up the the, the area where he's driving and gathers up all the garbage and throws it out. He calls it resetting the room. So the first one, find a linchpin action. I think you already know what your linchpin actions are. For me, it's as simple as going for a jog. doesn't even have to be a groundbreaking jog. It could be any jog, and you've already heard the dominoes that that does for me. The second Instead of adding a hard habit, I'm just going to totally make this life choice. Instead, find the path of least resistance. The third, reset the room. Every time you get up, put things where they go, throw garbage away, straighten your things, and then go. Shouldn't take you more than a minute. But when you come back to that thing, the setup should be easier to do the right thing. So in the Netflix example, he watched way too much Netflix, so he sets the controller up by the by the TV and then unplugs the TV. He does one thing further where he actually takes the batteries out of the controller. <laughs> Another example of resetting the room is actually deleting the social media apps that you want to break the habit of. So I just, um, uh, Michael MacArthur is a musician we know. We ran into him yesterday. He's a great musician. He produces a lot of, a lot of good work. And he said he got rid of the Facebook app. Yes, he still checks about once a day or so on his desktop or laptop, but he took it off of his phone. And when he took it off of his phone, he's not anti-social media. He's trying to optimize himself to produce the most amount of music. So if I were trying to produce the most amount of my book writing, the most amount of sales for my day, uh, for the website company I work during the day, um, if I were trying to Good morning. Who's saying, hey, Grant? Where are you, hey, Granting me from? Uh, 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 where are you hitting me from? I only see Facebook user. Oh, Ryan Edrington jumping in on the goals and gratitude. Good morning, Ryan. I hope you're doing fantastic this morning. We're talking about uh, how to build a new habit. So finding a linchpin action. Instead of adding hard things, find the path of least resistance and reset the room. The last one, and this is my biggest, biggest takeaway. And, uh... I'm choosing you over the morning news. I love it, <laughs> Ryan. Ryan, I love it. He says, Ryan Edrington says, I'm choosing you over the morning news. That's what I'm talking about, man. <laughs> Thanks so much, Ryan, for choosing us over the news. Hopefully we get a little smarter. And Ryan, FYI, and Ryan was an inspiration. I interviewed Ryan this week, this last week. And he was very diligent in sharing how much use he makes of his car ride time. And I was really convicted that I have, I do have a lot of time that I could make for more productive use. And so instead of going to the gym, I, I started running. And the latest book I'm reading, Ryan, if you haven't read it already, I'm sure you have, Atomic Habits. And so my, my last and final point, we covered the four major takeaways I had this morning. 
finding a linchpin action. Instead of adding hard things, find the path of least resistant. Leave your phone on the side table instead of taking it to the restroom. Delete apps off your phone, that sort of thing. And then reset the room. Take the batteries out of the remote control so you have resistance to actually watching shows. The last one was this. And I love this one because this is a true hack. I already do this one, but so few people take me up on this. Who else said, hey, Grant, and good morning. Someone else is hitting me up for good morning. I'm not seeing where all these uh, are coming from, but good morning to you, Facebook user. You need to let me know where you're piping in from. For some reason, your names aren't coming through, but I love you and I'm grateful that you're stopping by this morning. The last takeaway action was this, and this is a quick story. A teacher, a photography teacher at University of Florida had his photography class and he split the group right down the middle at the beginning of the semester and said, you will be graded on quantity. It's Laura. Good morning, Laura. Boom. How are you doing? Boom. That's Laura Gardner. You need to check out Perfect Day Production. She's fantastic. I hope you're doing great this morning. So my last final takeaway was this story that came from UF. And this teacher split his photography class right down the middle. And the one group, he said, you will be graded on quantity alone, the volume of photos you have. And at the end of the semester, they, they rated uh, them based on how many photos they turned in and, and they went through and said, okay, you guys have a, so there was a normal distribution curve of grades for the quantity group. Now the quality group came in and submitted their photos and their goal was not quantity. He said, you will be ranked on whether or not you have a rocking, extraordinary photo. And so, uh, the second group of students came in they submitted a single photo and yes, they were graded on whether or not that photo was phenomenal. And those grades across the board were lower, but that's not the significant thing. The significant thing, good morning, Laura. The significant thing about this was this. They, oh, not Laura, Lori. Oh, well, I see Laura Gardner over there, and then I see Lori over there. You guys are on multiple pages. <laughs> Sorry, Lori. I hope you're doing great. You know it's early, folks, when I'm like, is it Laura or Lori? And it's both. <laughs> Good morning, you two. <laughs> so, uh, so what they found was this. Not only did the group that produced the quantity of photos in terms of the distribution curve, they had more A's. The quality group submitted their quality photo. They can only submit one, their quality photo. They had lower grades across the board, but get this. They had the class decide on the best photo. And the best photo came from the quantity group. And the quantity group, the, the photographer, didn't even think it was their best photo. In fact, they were working hard at trying to articulate the principles of what was the best photo. The findings were this. For those who obsess about planning and quantification and outlining everything to its finest detail, what they found is the quality group spent far too much time deliberating on what made the perfect photo. And so they ultimately just had to submit something. Whereas the quantity group got the repetitions in and just kept doing tons of photos, tons of photos. And along the way, they learned more about aperture. Along the way, they learned more about a quality framing of the image. Along the way, they learned how to, how to pose their subject matter, how to do lighting. They learned along the way because of repetition. So of course, I love this because I believe just getting out there, especially when it comes to forming better habits. So do I need the perfect gym setup? No. Do I need the perfect gym clothes? No. I need a pair of sneakers and I need to get out and go walk this lake. I need to form the habit. That should be the focus is the habit. Someone asks, how, how long does it take to form a habit? They asked James Clear this and James Clear said, uh, Brittany says, that is a killer lesson. Brittany Dude, when I read, when I heard that this morning on my run, I was like, dude, I know this in my knower. And let's, and let me, let me say this because I know my lovely bride is watching and my lovely bride is a planner and she's an outliner and we need to go through our life and produce quality. We need in our website company, we need to produce quality. Brittany and Adam need to produce quality bookkeeping for their awesome high tier clients. They need to do it. So it does take planning. We're not throwing planning out. We're not throwing outlining out. We need to produce quality. 
Who was saying, uh, I struggle with this on social media? Who just jumped in and said this? Uh, Laura. Laura Gardner said, I struggle with this on social media. I end up not posting if I don't think it's perfect. Laura, I feel you. My lovely friend, James Joseph, he's an extraordinary friend of mine. We meet every single week. And if you know James, he's top tier. But if he can't give it the time to make it good and right, he doesn't post at all. So he he's a he's a he's a web he's a social media lurker, not because he's being creepy, but because he really wants it to be good. Now, Marissa has found a hack for this. Marissa has found a hack by narrowing her scope to only Instagram. She only does Instagram and it does everything else by proxy. So Marissa has done this by narrowing her scope and she does focus and spend a lot of time. I'll be driving and I'll lose my wife for a moment because she'll go into a, the Narnar zone up in her head somewhere. And I realize, oh, she's posting and she really focuses on making it perfect. But we have to make the habit first. The habit comes first. The quality comes later. We do need quality. We do need planning. But how do we even know what good quality is if we haven't done 100 reps? So in Laura's case, who's this post right here, in Laura's case, Laura, just go do 100 posts. And then stop and let's talk about what's quality. And even if we have to go back and delete some snafus, we can do that. Skylar can help you with that. But just push some stuff out and then get your advisors around you to say, okay, we like how this looks. We don't like how that looks. Then we start planning and getting quality. But people try to uh, uh, paralyze themselves first. Uh, seek progression over perfection. Ryan Edrington. Ryan, boom, there you go. Seek progress over perfection. That's Ryan Edrington from Ex Excellent Exteriors. Check him out. So we really do just need to form the habit. So again, I'm not throwing out quality. I'm not throwing out planning. I'm saying cart before the horse. Form the habit of doing it. Form the habit of in Brittany's case, I don't really know if she's doing property management. She was going to be doing some property management, but get into a half dozen homes and manage them and then improve your system. Yes, there's going to be fallout. Yes, there's going to be hustle and grind. Yes, there's going to be learnings. <clears throat> this is what Seth Godin says, front end thrashing. Brittany says quantity is important when it comes to outflow. Quantity of outflow is greater than quality. Outflow equals inflow. Mm. Mm. Brittany Welch will drop in bombs. Brittany's had some phenomenal leadership and management training, and some of this language comes from her awesome leadership and management training out in Tampa. Quantity is important when it comes to outflow. Quantity of outflow is greater than quality. Outflow equals inflow. I had this this week. We've hardly had any sales in the website company in Q3, and we did that intentionally. We weren't blind. We were focusing on quality of our new team, and that's great. Our new team is fantastic. That focus has paid off. <clears throat> In some ways, you could say it was quantity of hours with that team. So we get the outflow of quality time with that team and quantity of hours. And now we're getting the inflow reciprocation that they're managing a lot more for us. Now I need to apply that principle over to sales. And so this week I've got two interviews. Chandler Jericho of Rebuilt Meals is going to be an interview. That's inflow to Brittany's point. That's inflow. Because I went out there and put myself out there. I think I'm going to be talking to ex-city manager Tony Delgado on Monday. That The interview is not scheduled yet, but he and I are going to be doing our preliminary conversation on Monday to see if we can't bring them on. That inflow are huge wins for me because I love these guys, and they're doing awesome stuff, and they're doing big things. Chandler's doing big things with rebuilt meals. Uh, Tony Delgado has done huge things, man, and huge, managing huge organizations. That inflow is only happening not because I had the perfect pitch. I Facebook messaged him. <laughs> wasn't the perfect outline, wasn't the perfect pitch. I just needed to get the quantity of reps of invitations out there. So I'm going to leave you with that, guys. Here's the four takeaways real quick. Find a linchpin action. Instead of adding hard, complex new habits, find the path of least resistance and get it moving. Get the habit going. Reset your room. Anytime you finish with a room, reset that room and uh, put the things where they go, clean up, take the batteries out of the remote control, leave your, uh, leave your phone, or clean out the car, whatever you do, do micro straightenings. So that way when you come back, everything is easier to do the right actions you want to take. And last but not least, remember the difference between quantity and quality. And James Clear uses the term motion. 
versus action. Don't just move around where the planning and the quality, you don't even know what you should be planning. You don't even know the principles of success on this thing yet. So do the habit first, get the repetitions, take action, get the quantity of reps. Then you'll start learning the principles because your hands will be on it. Once you know the principles, then take a pause and make it perfect. Laura Gardner. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing but love. All right, guys, I'm going to leave you with that and go have breakfast with my lovely bride. Thank you for stopping by and getting involved. Thank you, Ryan, for stopping by. Thank you, Brittany. It's such an honor to have you on the show today. Laura, Lori, all of you lovely people who have dropped in. Sheila, thank you so much for dropping in early this morning. You guys, if you need help and support, visit us at the Facebook Goals and Gratitude group. If you need help, check out stateofthespark.com. Definitely. But more than anything, more than any of that, I really encourage you guys, go out and fulfill the mission, igniting lives of explosive significance today, starting with your own.